Hello students, in today's session we will discuss about the development of tongue. Now when you will see the development of tongue, you have to keep this thing in mind that tongue develops into the floor of mouth and it lies ventral to the pharyngeal wall. So when you will see the orientation in your body, you will realize that posteriorly you will have the vertebral column and in front of that you will have this tubular structure which is known as pharynx and this pharynx is connected anteriorly with the mouth and in the mouth you will have the tongue. So this is your oral cavity and here you can see that this is the pharynx and the tongue lies on the ventral to the pharynx not on the dorsal side of the pharynx. So in embryology we know that this is the ventral surface and this will form the floor of your pharynx. So the tongue develops into the floor of your pharynx or you can say ventral to the pharynx. Now when we are talking about the tongue, tongue is having the three different sources. One is the mucosa of the tongue, second is the areolar tissue of the tongue and connective part of the tongue and third is the muscles of the tongue. So when we are having all these three things, you are having the three sources. Now when you are talking about the mucous membrane, it comes from the endoderm of the inner side of pharyngeal arches. When we are having the fibroareolar tissue or the connective tissue, it comes from the mesoderm of the arches. And when you will have the muscles of the tongue, it also comes from the mesoderm, but it comes from the mesoderm of occipital somites or you can say myotomes of that occipital somites. So these, this is the most important concept for your exams and for to understand the embryology that tongue is not developed from purely or purely from uh, mesoderm. The mucosa is from endoderm of the pharyngeal arches which is actually the lining of inner side of the arches. So let's discuss first the formation of mucosa. So here you can see that this is the endodermal area of the pharyngeal arch. Now this is a hollow tube which lies inside the developing pharyngeal arches and we know that this hollow tube of the endoderm form, form the pouches and you can see that this is the one pouch which is forming your middle ear, this is the second pouch which is going to form your tonsil, so on. But on the ventral aspect of this tube, you can see that this is the developing tongue and this tongue is actually here we are talking about the mucosa because it is an endodermal tube and this tube is right now hollow and what will happen let, later on that there is an invagination of the uh, placement of your mesoderm inside this uh, hollow endodermal tube of the tongue. So this mucosa of the tongue is derived purely from the endoderm. Now, in this image, you can see that when we are talking about the formation of the somites, you know that we have a landmark is known as development of internal ear and the area before is known as pre-otic, behind is known as post-otic. Now in the post-otic part, you can see there is a formation of occipital somite. Now these occipital somites are forming the myotomes. These myotomes will migrate from here into this first pharyngeal arch where they are going to form the muscles of the tongue. Clear? So let's discuss the formation of mucous membrane of the tongue. So the mucosa of tongue is formed by the mandibular arch and you know that mandibular arch is a part of first pharyngeal arch. So in the first step initially there is a formation of three swellings. Two swellings are forming on both the side of the midline of first pharyngeal arch. You know that each arch is developed right in the right and left half, later on both the half will join in the midline. So when you will have this development of the mandible, there are two halves, so first pair of the mandibular arch showing the enlargement at the tip of their medial end. So this tip of the medial end of the first pharyngeal arch is showing the two globular swellings by underlying mesoderm and because of that the endoderm is showing the outer bulging on the pharyngeal wall and those swellings are known as lateral swellings or the lingual swellings and in between these two there is a formation of a midline swelling is known as tuberculum impar. So what will happen? There are two lateral swelling and there is a formation of midline swelling. This midline swelling is known as median lingual swelling or tuberculum impar and these side swellings are known as lingual swellings or lateral swellings.
then what will happen next to that there is a appearance of foramen cecum now you know that the for, from the tongue there is a invagination of a duct and that duct runs downward in the neck to form the thyroid gland so the pathway of the duct starts from a foramen in the tongue is known as foramen cecum now behind the foramen cecum in midline you will have two more swellings one swelling is developing from the second arch is known as copula and one swelling developed from the third and fourth arch is known as hypobranchial eminence or hypopharyngeal eminence now this hypobranchial eminence further divide into the ventral and dorsal aspect now in this image you can understand these swellings now this is the first pair of the two swellings which is known as right and left lateral swellings and there is a formation of tuberculum impar so this much area is developing from the first pharyngeal arch now behind this in the midline you will have foramen cecum now behind the foramen cecum what will happen there is a first appearance of a one more swelling is known as cupula and behind the cupula you will have the formation of hypobranchial eminence now my dear student there is a some difference in the view of indian books and uh, international authors now as per the indian authors it is said that the cupula and hypobranchial eminence are the same name but as per the other authors it is said that there is a first formation of the cupula and the cupula is a product of second arch while the hypobranchial eminence is a product of third and fourth arch but my dear student at the end you will realize that there is no derivative of cupula in the tongue so either you are reading the indian or the international author at the end you will realize that the cupula or we can say the component of second pharyngeal arch does not contribute into the formation of your mucosa of tongue so mucosa of tongue is contributed by first third and fourth pharyngeal arch so what are the components again you will see that first arch is forming the two lateral swelling and tuberculum impar second arch is forming cupula and third and fourth arch are forming the hypobranchial eminence clear now what about the muscles so my dear students the muscle comes from the occipital myotomes and i just told you that the muscular component migrates from those occipital somites and they will enter into the tongue and they will develop all the muscles of tongue except palatoglossus and these occipital myotomes pull their nerve supply that means hypoglossal nerve now here in this diagram again you can see that this is your otic vesicle and i just told you that this developing ear is a landmark for us so after that you will have the formation of somites so just below this otic vesicle here you can see that these are the developing somites of occipital region and the muscles here are supplied by the 12th cranial nerve so when the migration is taking place from here into this first pharyngeal arch these myotomes also pulling this nerve supply with them clear so the nerve supply is remain constant though they are migrating from this posterior side of the developing area to the ventral side of oral cavity so now at the end what is the nerve supply of the tongue so embryologically if you want to justify the nerve supply you will realize that anterior two third of the tongue as it develops from the mandibular arch and you know that mandibular arch is having two now one is the mandibular now which is a post traumatic now and corda tympanic now which is a pre traumatic now so we know that the corda tympanic now carries the taste sensation of your first pharyngeal arch while the mandibular now is carrying the general sensations of your anterior two third of tongue clear so now here you can see that you divide this tongue this is the anterior two third this is the posterior one third and this is the posterior most part of the tongue now this anterior two third of tongue is having a mandibular now for the general sensation and corda tympani for special sense then you will have the posterior one third of tongue now my dear students when you will see the posterior one third of tongue now there is a sulcus terminalis now here you can see that this is the sulcus terminalis which is dividing this anterior two third and posterior one third but this posterior one third is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve because the glossopharyngeal nerve is a nerve of third arch and this third arch developing the posterior one third but here a question arises that the circumvallate papillas which are present on the posterior most aspect of anterior two third also supplied by glossopharyngeal why the answer is that when 
the posterior one third is developing, what will happen that mucosa of posterior one third pulled anteriorly. Now, this mucosa pulled anteriorly and this mucosa overlay this posterior most part of the tongue. And because of this reason, what will happen now, the circumvallate papilla which develops here in front of the sulcus terminal is also supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Clear? Then you will have this nerve supply posterior most part of the tongue. So, my dear student, this is the posterior most part of the tongue. So, here you will have a reflection is known as vallecula. So, the area around the vallecula develops from the fourth pharyngeal arch and you know the fourth pharyngeal arch is having the nerve is known as superior laryngeal nerve. So, this area uh, is supplied by the superior laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal nerve is a branch of vagus nerve. Clear? Now, we left with the muscles of tongue. So, all the muscles of tongue except palatoglossus supplied by the hypoglossal nerve because they all are arising from occipital myotome. Clear? So, dear students, here again you can see that when we are talking about the tongue, you have to understand that this is the posterior most part of the tongue which is visible along with this epiglottis and this region developed from the fourth, fourth pharyngeal arch and that is why this is supplied by our vagus nerve and branch of vagus is superior laryngeal nerve which is contributing here. So, in nutshell, what is the nerve supply? So, anterior two-third of tongue is supplied by the lingual branch of your mandibular and cauda tympani of the facial. The posterior one-third of tongue supply your glossopharyngeal in both the cases. The root that means the posterior most part of the tongue around the vallecula is having the superior laryngeal branch of the vagus and all the muscles supplied by our hypoglossal nerve. Now, there are some important applied aspects. One is aglossia that means complete absence of the tongue. Hemiglossia, it is failure of the one lingual swelling to form, so only half tongue is there. Bifid tongue, if both the lingual swelling fails to fuse. Tongue tie or ankyloglossia. Now, this occurs when there is a short frenulum. Now, what is frenulum? Now, here in the midline, when you will open the mouth and you can see there is a midline band is visible on the uh, lower side of the tongue. Now, this lower side of tongue band is known as frenulum. Now, this frenulum is short in case of the ankyloglossia or tongue tie and this frenulum avoid the free protrusion of the tongue. So, it occurs due to the incomplete formation of the alveolingual sulcus. That means, the tongue is not completely separated from your inner side of the uh, alveoli uh, and the tongue is connected with the floor of mouth by the short frenulum. So, when this frenulum or the midline structure which lies below the tongue is short, it will lead to the tongue tie. Then you will have ankylosis superior, it is conditioned when the tongue is adherent to the hard palate. And lastly, there may be micro and macro glossia, the tongue may be very small or very large. Generally, the micro glossia tongue is associated with the mandibular hypoplasia. Clear? So, now at the end of this session of the development of tongue, Dear students, you should have idea about the uh, mucosal formation, about the muscles and connective tissue. When you are talking about anterior two-third, posterior one-third and posterior ma most part of the tongue, basically you are talking about the mucosa because the whole connective tissue and the muscles comes from the mesoderm. Only the mucosa is contributed by first arch in anterior two-third, third arch in the posterior one-third and the fourth arch in the posterior most part of the tongue. So, this is all for the session. Thank you.